So one more example before we move on. Let's take the sequence 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, and it continues on like this forever. And let's think about what its limit superior and limit inferior are. So let's firstly consider the sequence of supremums. So you can see no matter how far you go along in this sequence, the set that you're always going to be taking the supremum of is going to be the set 0, 1, 2, because those three numbers continue on forever, so therefore no matter how far you go along and get rid of the first n terms or n minus 1 terms or whatever, the set is always going to remain the same, and it's going to be 0, 1, 2, and 2 is the maximum in that set, therefore the supremum is always going to be 2, so the supremum sequence is just going to be 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, this constant sequence, and obviously it has a limit, its limit is 2, so the limit superior of the sequence is 2. The limit inferior, meanwhile, we're going to be taking the infimum of the set 0, 1, 2, and again, that set is going to remain the same no matter how far along we go. Therefore, this sequence is going to again be a constant sequence. 0 is the minimum of that set and therefore is the infimum. Therefore, our sequence of infimums is going to be 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, again, a constant sequence converging to 0. So the limit inferior of this sequence is 0. And you'll notice the reason I brought this example up is that this sequence has three limit points, 0, 1, 2, and the limit inferior is finding the smallest of those limit points, and the limit superior is finding the largest of those limit points. That's the reason I wanted to give you this example. Uh, an example of where there are more than two limit points, and where, again, it demonstrates how the main message of this video which is that when the limit inferior exists, it finds the smallest of the limit points, and when the limit superior exists, it finds the largest of the limit points. Now, before we go on to proving that, I just want to also talk about a bunch of sequences that are always guaranteed to have both a limit superior and a limit inferior, and these are bounded sequences. So let's now suppose that our sequence A is a bounded sequence, so here it is written out, A1, A2, A3, A4, etc., and Bounded means that there is an upper bound and there is a lower bound, so bounded above and bounded below. So there is some upper bound u such that everything in the sequence is less than or equal to u, and there is a lower bound l such that everything in the sequence is greater than or equal to l. So all the terms of the sequence are somewhere in between uh, or within this closed interval from l to u, and I'm trying to show that in red here. These are supposed to be the uh, to things in the sequence, the points in the sequence. Um. So why is it the case then that any bounded sequence is guaranteed to have a limit superior and a limit inferior? Well, let's think this through. So the sequence of supremums, the S sequence, and the sequence of infimums, the I sequence, these are going to be defined in the case that the sequence is bounded above and bounded below. Thinking about that in more detail, so if the sequence is bounded above, then all of the terms of the sequence are bounded above by this value u, therefore these sets that you're taking the supremum of, they're all going to be bounded above by this value u, because they are just subsets of the set of all the terms of the sequence which is bounded above by this value u. And by the completeness property of the real line, we know that any subset that is bounded above has a least upper bound. So all of these supremums are going to be defined, they're going to be findable. So this sequence is going to be defined. Similarly, because the sequence is bounded below, again, all of these sets that you're taking the infimum of, they're all going to be bounded below by this lower bound. And then again, by the completeness property of the real line, any subset of the real line that has a lower bound has a greatest lower bound, has an infimum. So all of these infimums are going to be findable, they will exist, they'll be real numbers. And therefore this sequence again is defined. The question then is how do we know that these sequences are actually going to converge to a limit? And the reason is that they are going to be monotone and they're going to be bounded in the respective directions. So this one is going to be a monotonically decreasing sequence, and it's going to be bounded below again by this lower bound here, and this one is going to be a monotonically increasing sequence that is going to be bounded above by this upper bound here, and then by the monotone convergence theorem, any monotone sequence that is bounded in the necessary direction, the relevant direction, does converge and has a limit in the real line. So these sequences will converge. So let's explain this monotonicity in more detail, starting with this sequence of supremums. So I've written out what these terms are in more detail. So S1 
well, in full glory, if you like, S1 is the supremum of the set of all terms of the sequence, A1, A2, etc. S2 is then the supremum of the same set, except that you've got rid of one entry. You've got rid of A1, so it's the supremum of this set. And then S3, you've got rid of another entry from this one. Uh, you've got rid of A2, so it's the supremum of A3, A4, etc. So each time you are taking the supremum of a progressively smaller set, so this one here, for example, is the supremum of exactly the same set, bar one element. Hopefully you can therefore see that this one has to be less than or equal to this one. It cannot somehow be bigger. How could it be bigger? If you think about this picture, here, are, imagine these are all the terms of the sequence here in red. Here is like, we can imagine that the supremum is kind of here, or on the picture the supremum looks to be around here. If you remove one entry, A1, A1 is somewhere on here, so you say if it's here, then the supremum of this set is going to remain exactly the same because that removing that entry did not change the supremum. But let's say A1 was actually a maximum, it was right on the edge here, it was the maximum entry in the set. Then removing that will change the supremum, but it's going to reduce the supremum. How could it possibly make it any bigger? It couldn't. You'd have to add in some new entry up here in order to bump the supremum up higher, but you're not adding anything new, you're only removing one entry. So the only possibility is that each time you remove something from this set, the supremum either stays the same or it goes down. It's never going to go up. So that's how I've come to this conclusion then, that the that si plus 1 is less than or equal to si. So this sequence, therefore, is a monotonically decreasing sequence. Now, the monotone convergence theorem, which hopefully you all know and are familiar with and love, it tells us that a monotonically decreasing sequence will converge to a limit in the real line, provided that it is bounded below. So, if I can show that this sequence of supremums is bounded below, I know that it's a monotonically decreasing sequence, I will therefore know that it has a limit by the monotone convergence theorem, and therefore that my original sequence has a limit superior. So how can I show that this is bounded below? Well, my claim is that it's going to be bounded below by this same value L that I had as a lower bound for my original sequence here. So my claim is that every single term in this sequence of supremums, the, all the SIs are greater than or equal to L, and therefore L is a lower bound for my sequence of supremums. So how can I argue that? Well, suppose for the sake of contradiction that it wasn't true. If it wasn't true, there would be something in this sequence of supremums that was strictly less than L, i.e. on this side in the picture. So let's call that term of this sequence S alpha, the term that doesn't really exist. So S alpha we're supposing is strictly less than L, but now remember what the definition of S alpha is. It's the supremum of terms, uh, of a set of terms from this original sequence. So in fact, it will be all the terms, A alpha, A alpha plus one, A alpha plus two, etc. onwards. Now, this being the supremum of this set means that everything in this set is less than or equal to this value. So you can now take one of these values, A alpha is going to be less than or equal to S alpha, and now put it with this inequality here, apply transitivity here, and we'll have A alpha is also strictly less than L, which obviously cannot be the case because L, by definition, was a lower bound for the original sequence, so everything in the original sequence had to be greater than or equal to L. So now we've found an element that's strictly less than it if you had this element of the sequence of supremums that was strictly less than it. Ergo, this thing cannot have existed, and all the terms of this sequence of supremums must be greater than or equal to L. So it is bounded below by L, therefore it's a monotonically decreasing sequence that is bounded below, therefore it does have a limit, and therefore the limit superior of our original sequence exists. So the reason that the limit inferior of this bounded sequence exists is pretty much the same argument but going in the opposite direction. So I will go through this just so that it's absolutely clear. So this sequence of infimums, this is going to be a monotonically increasing sequence. So i n plus 1 is going to be greater than or equal to i n, and it's going to be bounded above by this upper bound for the original sequence, and therefore by the monotone convergence theorem it's going to have a limit. So Let's explore further why it is the case that the sequence of infimums is monotonically increasing. So I've 
again written out what some of the terms of this sequence are in full. So I1 is the infimum of this set, the set of all terms of the sequence, and then I2 is the infimum of a slightly smaller set, so the same set except you've taken one element out, which is A1, and then I3 is the infimum of the same set as you had here for I2, except again you've removed another element, which is A2. Now again, look at the picture and think about what this means. This is pretty much exactly the same set as we had here, except that you've removed one element. Now, you haven't put anything new in, so how could the infimum possibly have moved down? So if we think about this picture here, here is about the infimum of the entire set of all the terms of the sequence. Now, the only way the infimum could move down is if you added something else in that was going to push it down. You're not doing that, you're keeping exactly the same set, in fact you're removing one thing. Now if that thing that you're removing is, say, up here or in the bulk of all these terms here, then removing it's going to make absolutely no difference to the infimum. However, if it was the case that this A1 element was actually the minimum of this set of all the terms of the sequence, then removing it would make a difference and the infimum would move upwards. So the only possibilities are that the infimum either stays the same when you remove an element each time, or it gets bigger. It cannot possibly go down by you taking an element out and then taking the infimum of a smaller set. So it's the same argument as we had here for the supremums, but obviously for infimums, and therefore the infimum is getting bigger or staying the same rather than getting smaller or staying the same, and that was the case for the supremums. So, the sequence, therefore, of infimums is going to be a monotonically increasing sequence. And again, it's now going to be bounded above and therefore obey the monotone convergence theorem and have a limit within the real line. So the reason that it's going to be bounded above is it's going to be bounded above by this value u that was an upper bound for the entire sequence. So I'm claiming that all of the things in this sequence of infimums have to be less than or equal to the value u. And again, we can show that by contradiction. Suppose for a moment that there was something in this sequence of infimums that was strictly greater than u, so on this side of u, and again we'll call that i alpha. Well, that thing is the infimum of one of these sets, the set of a alpha, a alpha plus 1, a alpha plus 2, etc. And by the definition of infimum, that value has to be less than or equal to everything in this set. So in particular, it has to be less than or equal to A alpha. So A alpha is greater than or equal to I alpha, which is strictly greater, we're supposing, than U. And therefore, you can conclude that A alpha would then be strictly greater than U, which is a contradiction because all of these elements in this original sequence were supposed to be bounded above by U, i.e. they were all less than or equal to the value U. So therefore, I alpha cannot exist. There cannot be an entry in this sequence that is strictly greater than this value u that was the upper bound for the original uh, sequence. And therefore, this is a monotonically increasing sequence that is bounded above by the monotone convergence theorem. It therefore will have a limit, and therefore our original sequence does have a limit inferior. So we've proven there that if you have a bounded sequence, i.e. a sequence that is bounded above and below, then that sequence is guaranteed to have a limit superior and a limit inferior. We'll have a break here, and in the next video we'll move on to proving that in the case that the limit superior exists, that it is the largest of the limit points of the sequence, and in the case that the limit inferior exists, it is the smallest of the limit points of the sequence.